what's up everybody welcome to another episode of why we love playstation vr sitting way 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 across the city from me this week yeah. and every week he's the king of all vr kings he's still the king himself who done it <laughs> he done it it's jeremy okay. king hey thank you brian paul and all the Very way welcome. off on the opposite end of the city i can almost no i can't even so far away i can't even see him out from my window i got a video skype to see him it's Ryan Paul, oh, clap, clap. Thank you very much for the applause. I really need that on a day like today. And every week on Live with PlayStation VR, we dip into the PSVR archive. We pull out a game at random. We dust the blow off of it. We check into it, see if it's been made love by developers, any updates, any DLC. And then we let you know the little game cats if it's worth your time. Uh, that being said, Jeremy, what game uh, did we decide to play this week? This week, this week was Dead Secret. <laughs> Dead Secret, developed by Robot Invader, um, but the PSVR port, strangely enough, was handled by Headmaster developer Frame Interactive. Yeah. Um, it was released April 24th, 2018, a while ago, uh, so about two years ago. Uh, $15, $14.99. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is our ongoing journey into the deepest, darkest realms so of the dark, PlayStation so Store, uh, yeah. trying to uncover the most the rarest the craziest mm -hmm. yeah you guys are you already know that's our mission statement we're trying to find some hidden oh, gems yeah. we're trying to also find the hidden trash especially after the last two episodes oh we found some shit boy did we find yeah. some shit we sure yeah. did also some people found dust the blow as like a new saying just this last episode everybody i'm like it just goes to show that for a long time it just goes to show no one listens when we talk. No one. No one no one even makes it that far into the video. <laughs> Thirty-eight seconds in, they're done. Right. Two you know? two thousand views on Leave the Nest. Uh <laughs> one thousand people realized it was the first time we said dust the blow. Uh, right. That being said, Jeremy, what kind of game is Dead Secret? Yeah, I'm gonna say point and click adventure. Mm. Yeah. It's such a point and click adventure game. Uh yeah. totally a, like a first person horror mystery. Uh, who done it? Like I said in the intro, it's investigative, a, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this game you can play it in VR, non VR, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yep. And you play it with a DualShock Four. Yeah, I jam. Jam. Who do you play as? You play as a reporter, and now I'm forgetting her name. Totally relevant. Yeah, they say it at the end. I can't remember. Yeah, they say it a bunch. Yeah. This is a story about a dead guy in all the yeah. suspects, and I felt like half the time we were playing, I was learning about her instead of the, them. Yeah, yeah, her journey with her and her dad to go see the movie four hours away in Arkansas and eating hamburgers and driving back. She's got a broken arm, too, the yeah. whole time. Yep. Yeah, which which you, you see right away because you walk into this house and there's a, there's a mirror. And you, you yeah. see, it's kind of cool that, like, hey, here you are. You get to see who you are right away. You don't have to kind of yeah. wonder the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so kind of explain to me how this game works, Jeremy. Give me, give me the, give me the, the framework. Talk to me. Well, basically you, it's almost like hidden rails. You, you just look around the room and it's click turns. You can't do, you know, there's no free, whatever the hell. And worse, like, and almost worse, like blink turning. So it actually does the boom, yes. boom, boom. And like it goes to black really quickly, but it's still it is quick. Yeah. Yep. Cause the, the slow blink turning is torturous. I, I didn't actually mind this as far as click turning goes. No, I didn't mind this either. It worked pretty well. Um, and basically whatever you look at, an icon will change, you know, you got a little rectangle there to show where you're looking at and it will change you the little footsteps if you can walk towards it or like a finger, if you can interact with it or like, you know, a hand, if you can grab it, so on, so forth. And then you just, uh, hit the X button and you, you'll slowly start making your way to what you clicked. It's almost like this entire house is just lined with like melted butter on a glass surface and you're wearing like tap shoes because she walks like can't slip gotta walk so slow okay. you know and it's now it's tedious it's so slow and then you get to wherever it is that you want to investigate you can look around and interact open drawers find you know hidden object type of things if you want yeah um and yeah i, I didn't i didn't actually mind the pace of the walking um, oh, for real? Yeah, I mean, it was slow and deliberate, but also this isn't the biggest house on the face of the planet. <laughs> like this is, no. but it's a yeah. it's a fairly small house. Like there's not a lot going on upstairs. There's only two rooms. Downstairs mm -hmm. is probably ten rooms, and then there's a basement. And it's like, uh, okay, 
There's not, yeah. not a whole lot to do. And, and the fact that you don't have to like hold down the uh, the analog stick, you just go, I want to walk there. And then you just kind of kick back and you like kind of look around as you're walking and just be like, am I missing anything? Yeah. I will say uh, it's a little strange because sometimes you'll see a piece of paper and it's like just over there, but you can't click on it yet. And so you're like, well, I, I'm going to have to walk over here and then walk over here just to yeah. get that piece of paper. It's those invisible rails uh, that the game yeah. leads you on. I mean, I feel like there should have been more invisible rails. There should have been, yeah, because there's definitely only a few paths, you know, and it's like you get to learn them after a while. So when you re-enter the kitchen, you know where to click to get to that area instead of being hunting around for the icon to change and then moving, you know? Right. And uh, and there are puzzles to solve, right? So like every so often you'll be, you'll, you'll find an item, it's locked, and then you could go to go find the key or you got to find out how to open this thing. Yeah. How did you find the puzzles to be? Do you think they were uh, like tedious? Do you think they were difficult, easy? What do you think? Uh, on a stata, on a level of like, you know, kindergarten through like college, they're definitely more kindergarten. Yeah. You know, they were very easy, very laid out. You know, like uh, you saw a, a, a crank that was, you know, too rusty for you to churn. Your next corner was like a chart showing you chemicals where you can mix different things to get, you know, uh, rusty things, as the newspaper article said, to be freed. And it's just yeah. like, oh, yeah, there's that answer. Yeah, it's like, you know? it's almost like the answers are always in the same room, like just to, just to say, and not, not only not only the sirens answers on Brian's end, sirens are on my end and the printer going off on my end, all sorts of noises over here. Um, it's, it's very sad. So it's, it's, so like there's a safe and I was actually mm -hmm. shocked that the safe combination wasn't in the same room as the safe because that's how, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. because that's how easy a lot of these puzzles were. If there's a yeah. puzzle to solve, the answer is usually like steps away. Right. Yeah. Um, so whenever it's even more than that, I was surprised. Mm -hmm. So no full locomotion kind of, uh, no. uh, node to node with click turning we're kind of off to a bad start, but there's a lot of people who are just going to discount this right away. Uh, for all the people who are still on board are about to discount it more because, man, the story in this game, and I think this, this game kind of like lives or dies on its story, Yeah, involves so much reading. Yeah. It, you know what's funny, though, with that is that this is, I can't say the first game I've ever read every single piece of paper. And I actually was so invested into uh, Sawyer's little story that he was having uh, Josie edit and type out for him. So I kept finding and, and reading his story, her diary pages and finding her story because she had her own story going on that she was uncovering while she was there at the house staying with Bullard, the main dude. And then Bullard had his own diary, his own research things. And those, you know, I, I was invested in all of the, I, I liked the stories for the most part. I, I thought they were interesting enough. And then the sub stories of that uh, snow woman there or whatever, that, yeah. that old Japanese, you know, uh, folklore tale that they were talking about in this game too. Like I, I liked all the individual stories. I might've collected all of them too. Yeah, it's it's almost hard not to collect all of them. Like it it's, it's, it is, it's yeah, fairly obvious, and uh, mm -hmm. and, a lot, and you know, especially when you're hunting for every scrap of paper possible to find things like that safe combination. You know, it's like just like looking around constantly. Um, so okay, so one of the things you mentioned was uh, is it Bobby Sawyer? Um, I think it's Bobby Sawyer. Yeah, yeah, Bobby Sawyer. So he's like the errand boy of the victim. Yeah. So the the guy who the guy who's dead, uh, who is Harris Bullard. Mm -hmm. Um. Bobby Sawyer is his errand boy and yeah. and he's like wants to be a fiction writer and so you're mm -hmm. finding literally chapters of his book that he's writing like eight yep. chapters of this book like all over the all over the house, all over the house. And so, yeah and so you just pick it up and then like so you, everything stops and you're just like yeah and then I get it I gotta be really honest here right I, when I was playing through this for for today's review, because I, you know, yeah. I've already played this. I've already read everything for the initial review. I mm -hmm. could not get myself to give two fucks about any of these characters, and I think my problem was is that, and I didn't realize this. I think my first time through, but the fact that none of these people are around, right? Mm -hmm. There, the, the the dead guy. Uh, all you see is his chalk outline on the floor. That's it. Yeah. Which you can't even interact with, which I thought was awkward. Like, oh, look, there's where he died. Right. Not even that. You're you know? there to investigate his murder, and yeah. you can't even interact with the chalk outline to no. be like, well, let's investigate how he died. Let's see what position yeah. he was in when he died. 
nothing like that. It seems very awkward. He's like, so we're just going to solve a bunch of really fucked up, like bizarre puzzles instead to get the full story here. Yeah. Uh, but but the fact that you don't actually interact with any of the suspects, they don't, mm-hmm. they're not in the house at all. They're, they're, you no. can't go talk to them or, or go down the street and like go talk. No, it's just everything no. in this house. You're basically alone. And then you discover... Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's why I was like, I don't, I don't give a fuck about who any of these people are. Like it just, like it all just kind of like rolled off me. I was like, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. And I just kept. It's like, and why do I want to read the Bobby Sawyer's story that he was writing? I'm like, I just don't care about any of this. I was yeah, like, yeah, I was the opposite. I, I was so invested in this game and their stories that I did this in one complete sit through. Two and a half hours it took me. It took me longer to beat this game than two, you. Two and a half hours. Yeah, that, and I did it in one sitting. I, I was that invested in it <laughs> that I just did it all. <laughs> yeah. Because it took me about 90 minutes, but I'm sure if I sat and read every single word again, I, I would have. Yeah. it would have taken me that extra hour. I got to there... say, out of two and a half hours, it was definitely probably an hour was just traversing from one room to the other. <laughs> it's, yeah. maybe, you know, maybe she's walking slow because she did break her arm. Maybe she used to move so quick she slipped and was clumsy and broke it. So now she's doing the extreme opposite, just being overly cautious. That must be it. That must, it must be. be. It. Yeah. Okay. So I said you don't. I said you don't see any of the uh, the other characters in the game, but that's actually not true, right? Not true. Oh, very soon into the game, you find out you you don't. So you're investigating a murder, but yep. yet it turns out that there's a killer. The killer goes by the name of the woodcutter. Yeah. And this is like something the police never talked about. It wasn't in any of the newspapers. This is something no. that you're discovering on your own after the fact. Yep. Uh, and so, and then there is, you can die in this game. There, there's, there's a killer after you. Yeah. Yeah. And there's jump scares there. Yeah. At first it's like, was it home alone? Not the movie. What was that walking sim one where you basically remember the old flat screen game you walk through, uh, and just read about this family and this girl. Gone they home. used to, gone home yep. this kind of had that feel to it and when i was approaching it when i first entered the house okay. gone home i was learning about the people in the situation that happened here through all these various stories got gotcha. you um so that's more how i fell into it you know and enjoyed it and i oftentimes because of the um the tile that shows like this creepy white-faced thing i'm like all right th- this is a horror game but then thinking no not really a horror game until it became like I, I jumped and I swore there was probably five different times that I um, said some bad language because of uh, little jump scares. But I only experienced two of the five. Is it five different deaths? Five, di- five different endings. Different endings. Right. And so and so we'll, we'll get to those in a second. Uh, the endings and the deaths. Um, so so I'm sure people watching the the footage of this game. They're gonna be like, seriously, Jeremy, you jumped how many times? Watch it, because it doesn't <laughs> yeah. it doesn't look terribly good, right? Like, what what did yeah. you what did you think of uh, you know this game's look and feel? I mean, when did this game come out again? Two years ago? Uh, yeah, two years ago. Uh, you know, I, I it wasn't the greatest looking game, but it also wasn't bad. I've definitely played worse. The sound I felt was awful. The sound was where it really suffered. The voiceover like, killed one- it for me. Yeah, that will that even like, you know, like there was a bat when you were towards the end of the yeah. game. And this bat sounded like the old 1930s radio type of thing where somebody went and screeched together two rusty things to make a screechy sound. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. I mean, so like the sound and the footsteps and, you know, the volume was all over the place. Certain things would be uh, quiet. And then when you finally find that goddamn record and go put it on the record play for no reason. Right. The music that blasts through the house, yeah, with that re- unbelievable sound coming out of that record player, because this game takes place in the what sixties, nineteen sixty five or something like that. I do have that here somewhere. It's uh, Vietnam War era, right after or during? Yeah, I don't know. I want to say nineteen. I wanted to say nineteen. Oh, nineteen sixty five. Oh, got that one. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh it's the sound is all over the place. I will say, like when when there's music. Like mm-hmm. n- normal music, not the not the record player at the end. Um, yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, this is this is kind of nice. But then that then the music turns off, and it's just like you got nothing. Um, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and again, the voice acting really was not was not good. And it, like, not only were, did I think that the voice actress didn't deliver the lines well, but I think on top of it, it was it was distorted. It, it was poorly recorded. Yeah, yeah, definitely budgetish. Better than Intruders by far. Like. 
they need to learn from this one. I thought the voice acting was much better in this game than Intruders. Better that than Intruders, was, but Intruders yeah. was at least recorded well, like where it was like a, you could the tell the quality was, was yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it was just it was kind of like like crappy recording with not terribly good voice acting, like combined to be like, oh man, when is this cutscene going to be over? I'm not interested in this at all. Yeah. Um, and most of the cutscenes, when they pulled you away and they showed you the life of this reporter that you're playing as, it was like yeah. it's basically 2D with just kind of like layers of 3D on top of it. But it's like not, yeah. none of it was impressive at all. No, it was like they pulled you into this black room where you're watching like this big picture on the wall, basically with the words underneath it and her telling this little snippet of her life to get you connected to her. Yeah. And, just, yeah. and just going back to the environments, uh, like it's it's very clean looking. But it's yeah. also very, very bare bones. Like, you can tell this is a budget game through and through. Uh, mm -hmm. But I have to kind of, like, double down on what you're saying. Uh, I've I played this game before. And when, I, and when I was going through, I jumped a few times. Even going, I think that this happens coming up. And then it does happen. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. It's like, it's, it <laughs> yeah, still yeah. got me. There was a couple of good jump scares. Um, yeah. Especially when you feel like you're alone for so long. And then you see something. You're like, oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to. There was one in particular uh i i don't even want to give it away but um you discover towards the towards the last 20 percent of the game um you know where the doctor is like and josie i know about blank in your room and then you yeah. do that th oh my god i jumped so hard at that point that that one scared me in the beginning time too the first time you experience um that what i don't want to say who or what no, but no, somebody no. you know right something Definitely made me jump. Exactly. Uh, and so there's also uh, detective vision, right? You, you end up yes. finding a couple lenses that go into a mask. And, but what it, what it all really is is detective vision. You hit the triangle to put the mask on. And, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of see shit hidden around the room. Yeah. And there's usually like this big demon dude around there too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like some dude dressed sharp with a, uh, a devil mask on his face. That traditional devil mask you've seen before, yeah. you know? But yeah. Now you did a lot of reading. Was that explained in this game? No, no. Okay, so not at all. I'm I'm so happy to hear that because I was like I don't remember this being explained. Uh, no, nope. but, but I also don't feel like reading all this to find out if it was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if it was going to play into something with the lore that you were reading about about the because nothing ever came around why they kept talking about that old folk tale that he was so obsessed on right. about that guy encountering that white skinny ghostly woman that you know killed the guy's father this isn't the story this isn't part of the game right, right, right. you know that that whole thing I, they never explain why that stuck with him so much because the overall overarching thing of this story with those goggles and whatnot is the i forget what the guy the scientist in the game called this uh thing he was basically trying to prove but he was trying to connect subconscious uh I guess survival techniques like they give an example of the water finder that stick mm -hmm. where people would walk along the ground to find the water and what he was saying is that you know uh subconsciously your your body can determine the different uh, ways to know there's water nearby and it consciously you you don't even know you're guided along and you're finding the water but it's your subconscious doing it and you think it's a stick guiding you like, yeah yeah, th yeah there's a little bit of like snake oil shit going on here as well it's yeah. like, it's sort of like hey everything by the cycle of the moon and by the way you gotta put these leeches in this thing and it's blah blah blah, blah. and then <laughs> oh oh and then here's your battery for the flashlight it's like oh the batteries two of them yep we should the one thing i want to add is yeah. that so we should clarify you're a reporter I don't even think the police give a fuck. They didn't even investigate shit, apparently. Apparently not. <laughs> Somebody's dead in that house, okay. Right. So now there's a reporter in there, and she's going to investigate and solve this. And it's like, to my understanding, police usually do that. So I, <laughs> I don't know what it was that even drove her to this town to solve a crime, because clearly stories had to have been written, and investigations had to have failed or pulled up nothing in order for her to see this and be like, I'm going to drive to that town and solve this crime. Yet it happened so recently that there was still a chalk outline on the ground and the boxes and all that stuff from moving out or his divorce or I don't know, because it seemed like uh, this divorce happened a long time ago, but is still going on. I, I, time wise, everything's all fucked up yeah, in the game. Too. It does not explain any of this at all. Like it's just, a lot of this felt like it was happening years and years and years ago. But if you think about yeah. it, it seems like it was all extremely recent within days. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I don't think they really, as they were writing it out, they might have been like, uh-oh, 
Right. None of this makes sense, but you know what? We're going to put it out there anyways. Just a heads up, um, there yeah. is a sequel to this game called Dead, uh, Dead Secret Circle, uh, and okay. uh, you know, also made by the same uh, Robot Invaders uh, dev team, uh, on PC only. Now, ah. I'm really hoping that Frame Interactive, hopefully this sold well on uh, PlayStation VR enough, where Frame Interactive would find it, you know, possible to at least port over the sequel. Because it does yeah. look like the sequel took everything that made Dead Secret good and mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, advanced the formula just a little bit. Um, like, it may not be an amazing game, but it does seem like a step beyond step what up. we got here. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it follows the same reporter. So it's, okay. you, you play the same character. At the end of the game, it kind of tells you about her fate and what she ended up doing. And then, uh, and, and so it kind of follows her to her next uh, reporting gig. And I do like how they ended you so that you can go and get the... Oh, well, all, I don't know all, the, the, all the different endings, right? So you can yeah, actually... Yeah, right there. Yeah, you, you can kind of just trial and error, which is unfortunately how you get all the endings in the game. Uh, it's, mm. It is very trial and error. It's like even, even when you die... Even when you die, it's like it goes. Do you want to go this way and jump out a window? Or do you want to go this way and hide in a closet? And yeah. there's no way to tell which one the right one is. And one of them's going to kill you, and one of them isn't. And so yeah. to see all the endings, it's just trial and error. And so, the times I did, I was like, uh oh, I chose wrong. I know it. I'm dead. Right. And you can't move. You yeah. Know, once you choose one spot, you chose it. You just sit there. Oh, you ain't running away. No, that's it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jeremy, let's rate this sucker. All right, let's rate it. What's our rating, rating scale? scale. Ooh, here we so go. one. One is just, you know, click on the shop right now, buy it. You absolutely need to add this to your library. It's gold. Two is like, wait for a good sale. Wait for it to go down to $7.99, whatever your buying price is. It's yeah. decent, and you'll enjoy it once it's reduced in price. And three, don't bother. Save your money. Rent a movie. Do something different because you're not going to like this move, this game. And that's our scale. Brian, what do you rate this? Uh, just a heads up, I guess we should probably say that this has been on sale twice for half price. You said, um, you know, you said two might be wait for a sale, wait for half price. It's been on yep. sale twice for seven forty nine. So uh, there you go. So if that's what we rate it, then uh, keep that in mind. It may do. Yeah, yeah. It may go on sale again. Yeah. Um, I kind of bitched the whole time about all the reading you have to do. Um, I think the first time through, I didn't mind it. I was just kind of like lackadaisically playing through the game, you know, just being like, I'm going to take it all in and enjoy it. This time I was like, I'm just not enjoying this. But what I did like about all of it was that the, the game was really good about making sure you didn't miss any of the important elements. If you finished, if there was like a big newspaper clipping and like you decided you didn't want to read it and you just kind of X through it. Mm -hmm. At the end, you the dude pulls out, or the dude, the, 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 the lovely lady you're playing as, pulls out yep. a little notepad and writes down the important note that you needed to take from that newspaper that you didn't read. Yeah. Right? And then every so often, I think two or three times in the game, before you progress, like you're going to enter a door and it says, hey, before we do this, let's recap things that are going on. And it, yeah. it almost gives you a quiz, but it's not trying to figure out if you've been paying attention. It's to make sure you have all the knowledge you need going forward to understand what's happening in the game. Yep. It's, you know, it says, oh, the, you know, so, uh, you know, the, what, what is this person's motive for this? And it'll give you four options and you go and it says, I don't think that's the right one. You click another one. You're like, that's right. And then it'll explain a little bit more about it just to make sure that you are on the same page. So you just it, it's, it's hard to get lost in this game is what I meant, what I mean to say. Yeah. They give you a lot of text, but they don't actually make you read it. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but overall, though, uh, I still think that despite the low budget, like kind of veneer, veneer that this thing has, uh, and the kind of poor voice acting and, and just the, the the fucked up audio, um, there is something very appealing about this, and and it makes me really kind of desperately want to play the sequel. And uh, so, and, and, you know, they they priced it almost right. I would say that you know when it's on sale for fifty percent off, seven forty nine, and play through this thing. It'll take you about two hours, and. Uh, and and that's and I, and I think it's good enough to warrant your time. And the couple the couple jump scares that there were were enjoyable. Uh, mm -hmm. So so I think this is this is a pretty solid two for me. And I and I don't think uh, I don't think I fully you know like I said I wasn't fully on board with the story the second time, but I did enjoy it the first time. So uh, so yeah, two. What about you, man? Tell talk nice. to me. So I um, right off the bat, as soon as I started playing it, and I walked up and opened the first draw. It kind of had me. I, I, I kind of already liked it. You know, the controls were super easy. You know, it's like this button to do this, square button, open your inventory. Uh, things will glow when you grab an item and, and look at where you think it needs to interact. It wasn't overly difficult. It didn't require too much brain juice, you yeah. know. 
Um, I didn't mind the voice acting too much. It wasn't like completely horrible to the point for me where it disconnected me big time or that's all I could think about. You know, it wasn't phenomenal, but it wasn't anything that just took me out of the story. Um, I didn't mind the stories and the, the various different pieces that really didn't have anything to do with the overall story. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. You know, but I, I, I dug it. I kind of thought it was interesting. I, I like the the scientists research notes into various different phenomenon in the subconscious and, you know, that all the whole thing. I, I liked Bobby Sawyer's little story he was working on and Josie and her hunt for X because I don't want to spoil that. Um, I liked all that. And I, I thought the pacing was well where, you know, it progressed the story. It didn't throw too much at you at once and it wasn't long periods of nothing to do. It definitely kept things going at the right pace. Um, I didn't like how slow it was. I mean, like it was really slow in between your walking, but it didn't kill me. It wasn't like horrible to the point where I'm like, Christ sakes, you know, like it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Um, the sound though, sound was poor. Um, I liked the LA Noir type of notebook checkpoints in those tests they give you before you progress. Right. Cause yeah, I think there was three or four of them. And I get one time, one answer wrong. And I was like, God damn it. Cause I was hoping there was some sort of achievement for never getting them wrong. Your first playthrough. And there's not. But, yeah. Probably not. Yeah. There's not, there's not, even not. A pla there's not even a platinum trophy in the game. There's, oh, there wasn't, I think there's five trophies total. I might have gotten them all then. You know. yeah, maybe. <laughs> I got to check. <laughs> but I, I liked how they did that. Before you went on, it was like, let's review. You know, and it's just like, I think, you know, blah, 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 did this. And you're like, click, and you're like, that's right. You know, so you get a good, clear understanding of what the story's trying to tell you. It checks to make sure you know it, and then you move on. And then especially right towards the end, it's like, you really want to move on. <laughs> Are you sure? They ask you three separate times before you progress. Right. Um, I thought mechanically everything worked fine you know what i mean there was no real issues um with controls not working the jump scares got me i was surprised it got me several times and and i liked it you know just enough nice. um so uh, for the price point 15 is a little steep but even at 15 i still would give this a solid two nice. um you know seven or less with big yeah no brainer i i really i i actually really for all its flawedness of this game kind of like the movie little monsters Overall, the movie sucks, you know, but for some reason, I still love it. Wait, Little you Monster know? sucks? I, I, yeah. haven't, I guess I haven't watched it recently. That, I loved that movie as a kid. Oh, I loved it, too. But yeah, go ahead and show it to your father. And he'd be like, what the fuck are you showing me, Brian? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like, I love it. You know, I used to know that movie from every word. But anyways, regardless, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like, <laughs> I thought this game was pretty damn good. I enjoyed it. So nice. yeah, a solid two for me. I, I think it's uh it was a, a fun play through one sitting for me. Yeah. My attention span. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah, two. I'm I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that because as I, as I was going through I was like, oh man, Jeremy's not going to be into this at all. Um so I'm <laughs> I'm really happy to it, sound, it sounds like you liked it even more than I did, which is wonderful. Yeah, I think I might have, yeah. All right. So we've uncovered possibly a hidden gem. Yeah, Good maybe we did. Look at, right? Look, look, look at us. We're doing doing real stuff over here. Doing real work. <laughs> oh no shit! Yeah, making right. a making a point, the change here. <laughs> making a difference in everybody's yeah. life. That's not true yeah. at all. No, probably not. <sighs> All right, Jeremy, I think that does it for another episode of Why We Left PlayStation VR. I want to make sure everybody in the comments down below, let us know what you thought of Dead Secret. Um, how, how was all that reading for you? Did you enjoy the story? Did you not enjoy the story? Uh, what did you think of the voice acting? Tell us all your thoughts on this game. Also, let us know what other uh, PSVR hidden gems or hidden turds that you might want us to play and then talk about for a half an hour. Yeah, uh, really. I mean, we've, we've actually got a couple more, right? We've got like at least two more. Um, at least two more, yeah. And dude, like the, the suggestions have been rolling in pretty hardcore. Like a lot of people have just been like messaging me being like, have you ever played this? And I was like, yes. And they're like, but it would be a great episode. And I'm like, no, we'll do it. Eventually. Yeah, Eventually. add it to the list. Well, yeah, yeah, the list is long and it gets longer every week. Yeah. All That's right. She said. <laughs> it's for another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. I'm Brian Paul. And I'm Jeremy King. And we'll see you next week.